right. Welcome to Talking Shop. And uh, Happy New Year. Yeah, Happy New Year. <laughs> um, uh, we are going to be looking at Luke chapter 2, verses 40 to 52. Uh, little boy Jesus. Not so little Jesus, anymore. Yeah. 12 year old Jesus. Bar mitzvah Jesus. Bar mitzvah Jesus. Is that a is that a noun? Do you get bar mitzvah? It, you mean a verb? Verb? Yeah, yeah. I, I guess you can. I mean, it's we'll talk about that. But okay, yeah. yeah. Uh, like, subscribe, and uh, we'll get after it. The evil way spit out my Lord in every way. Yet I'm still welcome in the arms uh, of Luke to beginning at verse 40. And the child grew and became strong, and filled with wisdom, called God the favor liar, of God was upon him. Quite an intro. Yeah, right. uh, that is quite an intro. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, you could say it's a, it, the ending of one section, but it's the start right. of our... Uh, yeah. So this comes on the heels of Simeon, yep. Temple, yep. Baby Vacation. Jesus. Yep. Now we're the point is he he's older now. Yeah. So <laughs> this is your opportunity to preach on the twelve lost years of Jesus' life. Yeah. You can make up whatever you want, yeah. and uh, no, it's bad. Not like I mean, bringing you, like little birds back to life. You could, <laughs> I guess, uh, if you you know want to be unbiblical for your people. But right, uh, yeah, right. this is one of those places where scripture just doesn't speak, and so we don't either. So um, we'll maybe do this. Why then is it important that there's a mention of him at 12 years old? Yeah. So this is uh, this thing goes to it. There's some debate, and and commonly nowadays it's done at 13 when you turned a, a teenager. Okay. Um, but this is the age of accountability for uh, for a young Jewish boy. Okay. So this is the time when they become bar mitzvahed. Uh, yes, it's become a verb, but the the word bar mitzvah means son of the commandments or son okay. of the connections. So so this is when for us in the Lutheran Church, this is confirmation. Right. This is when you take this yoke of the faith upon yourself. You've been shepherded under your your parents. You've been uh, you've been brought up in your uh, so in your classes. That faith is my faith. That's right. This right. is now the opportunity for that faith to be taken on as your own. Um, so not that you actually get to choose to do that, but that's a conversation <laughs> for another day. That's right. That's right. So uh, so so, in, yeah. so in the life of of the the Jewish people. A mention of Jesus at 12 is important. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, and what he does after this point becomes important then right. as well. Yeah. Okay. So um, we find out some, some good things about uh, Mary and Joseph is they are, it turns out, very good Jews. Yeah. Surprisingly so. Yeah. I mean, you know, yeah. who'd have thunk, yeah. right? Every year they go uh, uh, to Jerusalem for the feast of the Passover, which is what Jesus or which what God actually asks His people to do in yep. uh, Exodus to gather every year. And you find uh, maybe not so much in Luke's gospel, but in John's gospel, you find Jesus doing the exact same mm -hmm. thing every mm -hmm. all the festivals. He he's going back to Jerusalem. Yep. Right? He's, yep. He's, he's 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 keeping the commandments. Keeping the commandments. Yep. He is a son of the commandments. Oh, so, oh yeah. Right, let's right, see how I did right, that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so now we find when he's 12 years old, uh, that time for uh, Passover comes around, and they go, and Jesus goes with mm -hmm. them. Right. Yep. Because he's a he's a he's a practicing man of the faith. Yeah. So yeah, well, and I, I think from one of my one of my friends, uh, he says that that first kind of festival where you are no longer the child asking the questions and all of that, that's like a that's a big deal too. Sure, right for us. I mean, think of first communion or any of those kinds of things. Joining the adult Bible study versus the youth Bible study okay. kind of thing, right? This sitting is sitting at the at the adult table. Sitting, sitting at the, the adult table, table <laughs> instead of the kids table. That's right. This is a this is a deal. This is your part of the transition from. Okay. Now you are you are becoming a grown up in this uh, in this reality. So, so yeah. So this this festival at twelve years old would have been a big deal for him. Big deal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and so they head back, and uh, we don't know exactly how they carpooled back then and how things uh, <laughs> laid out, right? But um, they 
it seems like they they traveled a bunch of people. Uh -huh. uh, obviously, it's going to be safer to travel with a bunch of people, mm -hmm. and there's a bunch of people traveling. Right. Uh, yeah. I mean, it, sometimes I wonder if it's not just that they were traveling with a bunch of people, but that everybody was traveling the same way at the yeah. same time, and so they were just amongst a bunch of people. Yeah, and they knew yeah. them. They're 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 coming from the same place, going to the same place, that sort of thing. Yep. Um, and so they're heading back, and they think Jesus is there. Yeah. They assume that he is their son, and since they as yeah. a family are headed back, he, he is headed back with them. You had a, a great idea for a sermon title for yes. this. Is, yes. Uh, you know what they say about assumptions. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. So they <laughs> they go, they get a days away, so you can kind of imagine they break down camp, or they set up for camp, and uh, they start asking around, hey, uh, have you seen Jesus? Yeah. And everyone says no. Yeah. And they're terrified. And they become terrified, yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, so much, again, you, you, you don't want to read too much into what's not there, but you can imagine they, you know, they know who this right. is. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah. So, they, so they have a, uh, yeah. They, they have some, there's some weight to it. I yeah. mean, it's like, and they're sort of like, we lost the Messiah. Yeah, I'm sure my mind. Of. I'm sure my mind has gone there in past years. It did not go there this year. But yeah, it's. Uh, right. Oh yeah, we're supposed to be caretakers of the Son of God. Yeah. And Oops. We have. Yeah. We have misplaced him. <laughs> We've misplaced him. <laughs> so they go back, uh, and there is definitely some great foreshadowing here uh, because they do find him in Jerusalem. Yep. Uh, after three days. After three days. Uh, yeah. And what's he doing when they find him? Uh, yeah, uh, he's being a son of the commandments. And I think this is where if you, if you wanted to go that way, and this is why I kind of bring all of that up, that, um, that this is what, and it's even with Jesus words, this is what he's expected to do. And if you know that idea of, of the bar mitzvah and the fact that that happens around this time when he's 12 and all of that, then it. It should, if we know who Jesus is, make sense in our mind. This is why he's kind of surprised in that whole interaction. Um, he's sitting in the temple, and he is, he is moved out from under the yoke of his earthly father, who has taught him all of the practices, who mm -hmm. has been with him through all of that, mm -hmm. and he is now taking this on as his own. Yeah. Um, and so you find him stepping that next step into the temple among all of the teachers and... Uh, and working through his faith. Yeah, it's sort of like, oh, he he took this seriously? Yeah. It's <laughs> well, to some extent, and this is where you could you could come in, it's not the confirmation of of you get through it, now you're done. Yeah. It's now this is the entry level to the next point. Right. And that means that it's not going to be under the care of my Sunday school teachers. It's not going to be, you know, under the care of my parents. And it this is now my faith. Um, and so uh, he is stepping out into that next step to, to become what he is supposed to be. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. And and so and there's a lot of um, there's a lot of astonishment going on. Yeah, there is. The, the people, the teachers are astonished that I mean, first of all, that he's he's attentive, but then the questions he's asking mm -hmm. uh, as he's listening to them uh, in their teachings, uh, you can only imagine. I mean, again, who who knows what that is, but right. But um, uh, certainly, is this profound moment, and then uh, Mary and Joseph are astonished, are amazed, or whatever as they yep. see this happening. Yeah. Uh, first of all, uh, it's kind of he's made it three days by himself at twelve years That's old true. in Jerusalem too. That's kind of <laughs> and he's hanging out in the temple. Yeah. Um, uh, the guy is definitely kind of doing his own thing, um, and uh, you know. Mary's words make total sense, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, it, it's sort of, don't, don't you care about what this... It's a great moment. Yeah. I think her fear, uh, her and Joseph's fear, right? Yeah. Uh, your father and I have been searching for you in great distress, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, I don't know. Do you make much of that? Like the the... Well, they are, but I think this is where my, my sermon title, you know, what they say about assumptions, kind of works in, too. Because um, I've heard this, I think I even used it in a, in a recent sermon on this text. Recent, I don't know, it's been the last three years, whenever the cycle <laughs> is. Um, that, 
you know, when they went back, they probably searched for him at the local park. They searched for him at the toy store. They searched for him down by the creek. You know, they searched for him everywhere where they assumed he would be. a 12 year old boy would be. Right. Forgetting who he is. Who he is. Right? That's pretty good. Um, yeah. and, and so, you know, obviously, yes, they've been in great distress because they have been looking for a 12 year old boy. All the while, he has been acting as the Son, Son of, God. of God. Yeah, very. That's really good. Yeah. So, yeah. That'll. Yeah. And that's, that's the good. again the yeah. assumptions there, right? What we bring to the assumptions about who Jesus mm -hmm. is and what he does versus what he actually does because of who he yeah, is. Yeah, and and really, that's exactly what he yeah. responds to them. With, right. Right. You know. Um, you know why? Yeah. Why were you like searching around? Yeah. Um, uh, because you should have known mm -hmm. that this is exactly where I would have yeah. been. In my father's house, um, uh, you know, attending to his word. Yeah, his and there's this great play that you can play between Mary and Jesus because she says, your, your father, father and I, yeah. and he says, I'm, I've been, yes. a, you know, in my father's place. And there is no, there is no house there uh, as I was translating that verse. Um, it's just uh, the things, right? Uh, in the, the things or the... Uh, yeah. It's a dative neuter. Um, it can almost be article. like my uh, like my father's business. Yeah, you've my heard it. Stuff, I think some right? translations yeah. are about the business my of my father. Things. I'm doing my father's yeah. things. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. it's uh, you know you can you can kind of add in there whatever you want, but it's my father's right versus your father kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. again, I think that there's just this disconnect of. Of he's bringing them into the reality that he has been in, but that they have stepped out of, and you know, no, no fault of their own. They have sure. a twelve-year-old boy. Yeah, that's right. Right, um, uh, among other things in life, this is the world they know, mm -hmm. and um, and so he's trying to reorient them and remind them that and he is he uh, is unique. He's been bar mitzvahs. This is his father. He's mm -hmm. totally like I, I think what you brought in there, like that. He, he's doing exactly what it ought to have been. Yeah. I mean, it, like in that regard, he's doing that, you know, no shock. Yeah. Perfectly. Right. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I mean, he's, that's exactly what he's doing. Yeah. Um, uh, now, Mary uh, and Joseph, it says they don't, they don't understand this. Mm -hmm. um, they don't get it. Uh, um, but uh, there's this, this kind of compassion that Jesus has for his, for Mary and, and for Joseph, um, in that he 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 submits himself to them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and that I mean, we think about it and we go, well, of course he's twelve years old, right? He would submit to his parents um, because he's bar mitzvah, not necessarily. This is also the age at which you go off and you come under the yoke of a rabbi. Sometimes, if you're if yeah. you're good enough. I think this is, the, as you said, the picture of Jesus and his compassion, that even though he is now this great authority, even though he is set free, yeah. he, uh, what's, the, what's the word that Paul uses? I'm just uh, losing it in, uh, in Colossians, um, where he, he humbles himself. Yeah. Maybe that's the word I'm looking for. Yeah. And, and takes on our own frailty, if you will, oh, uh, yeah, yeah. and submits yeah. to that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, and says, even though I don't have to, I, for your I will. sake, for yeah. your yeah, sake, yeah. I will. Yeah. And so I think this is more aligned not just about his obedience as a as a child, and his order in in God's creation, but I think it's also part of that compassion of yeah, like you, you you're not you're not going to get this. Yeah. So let me yeah. So let me. I'm going to come home with you. Yep. Right. And and because his time obviously is coming. Right. And it, and it says you got this great line where Mary uh, treasures up all these things. This is the second time Luke's gospel mm -hmm. she does this. Mm -hmm. First, when the shepherds come. Right. And tell them about the angels and all that. Um, I was talking with somebody uh, the other day uh, about this, and you know it's great that you get this in Luke's gospel because. Mary's probably one of his sources, right? Mm. Or one of these like, well, how do you know all this stuff? Well, because Mary told me, right? Yeah. Like, like yeah. Luke's a guy who right at the gate goes, you know, I, I interject people, it out. I check yeah. people out, right? Yeah. And, and and about this story, and so you get this, you know, she's she's recalling all this stuff um, uh, of what happened with our Lord um, when he was a little guy uh, to now a young man mm -hmm. uh, here. And so he goes back with them and uh, increases in wisdom and stature. 
and in favor uh, both before God and man, I think is how uh, we translated it right. Um, yeah. And this could be, you know, a, another, again, because our goal here is not to tell you what to preach, but to give you nuggets for that. This could be a nice bookend too, because this, this pericope starts with the favor of God was upon him. Yeah. And now he's growing in the favor of God and man. Yeah. Right. So there's this, this becoming this God, the, that God coming through Christ to men. Right. Hmm. Um, and, and that whole movement and how he's doing that. And yeah, he's going to be misunderstood. And yeah, he's going to do things a little differently. And, and yeah, it may not be the way that we want him to do things. Right. But nonetheless, this is his role to be that, that connector between God and man. And I think that, that favor between verses 40 and, and verse 52 and the addition of and man there, I think, could be a, a nice Yeah, because Yeah, he, because he, in essence, disappears yeah. From the scene until he's baptized by John. Right. From this point on. Yeah. Um, and uh, and 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 that and goes right from that to temptation in the wilderness. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is all the, this is epiphany and what we do there. But um, through that season. But but yeah. So um, I, I like that. I like the the bookends of this, uh, the favor of God and this growing in in stature and wisdom. And these mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so, you know, again, maybe in some ways another chance to marvel at the Word of God made flesh. This isn't just a nicety. And, yeah. and Christmas wasn't just a passing thing. Yeah. This has this ongoing ramification of this life of this, this child uh, who now he's giving us all clues of where he's going. Yeah. Like he's going to be about his father's business. Yeah, and this isn't just a little boy who, you know, is obedient and is nice yeah. and is, you know, wiser beyond his age. This is a little boy who submits for the sake of others. Yeah. This is a little boy who, who continues to learn and grow more about his relationship with his God and with people around with him. people around him, yeah. Right? This is a... This is somebody who who is faithful and yeah. uh, and it, who is seeking uh, to be faithful in all that he is given to do. Yeah. Um, yeah. And all of that ultimately becomes, and I think you know, with man or and man, uh, and yeah. with his parents, it becomes for your sake. For your sake. Yeah. So it's good stuff. Uh, the for you of Christmas keeps on going. Yes, it does. That's right. Uh, check out craftofpreaching.com. Lots of good stuff there. Um, as I said, like, subscribe. Hopefully, Ernie will be back with us. He was here last week. Just I know me he and was. Ernie. Yeah. You here. Yeah. Sorry. Nice to have you back. Thanks. Uh, but uh, we will check back with you next week. God bless your preaching.